Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back again with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are using the My Hero stamp set and then the coordinating dies. Uh, I'm a huge fan of making like card sets or several cards in the same fashion, especially if you need a bunch, um, but I also get bored very easily. So I like to mix up the colors of the backgrounds. Um, and so I'm using Distress Ink, two colors of Distress Ink for every card that I am making today. And um, I'm just going to blend on starting with the lighter color um, to, I don't know, about three quarters of the way up so that it blends into white. And then I will add the darker color underneath that. These are super simple. You could totally do it with one color. I just like the depth that it gives uh, of using two. You could definitely simplify these so that it didn't take as long. Um, but I, as you know, I make scene cards, so it, the length of card making does not typically <laughs> bother me. Um, so I really love this set. Uh, I actually made these cards quite some time ago. I just have not gone around to doing the voiceover. Um, super big fan of this set just because we all have um, different heroes for different things and I really feel like you could apply this to like Mother's Day or Father's Day um, or just as a thank you for the people in your community or maybe these people are members of your family um, and I just really love the way that it incorporates all of the people in our community who are doing things. Um, so there are dog tags in there, there's like little books with a little apple, um, a stethoscope, a badge, um, and then like the little paramedic cross. Um, so if you wanted to, you and your kids could sit down and make these and, and you know, drop them off at a police station or a fire station or a local hospital, um, since we still are very much in the middle of the whole COVID-19. Um, you know, I'm sure that they would appreciate any thank yous you wanted to send their way. Um, in more traditional times, obviously, I'm sure that they would appreciate a thank you anytime, our military always. Um, and then, you know, if you had a nurse that you loved or, um, you know, like I said, if you're somebody in your family is, um, you know, in the healthcare field, would absolutely apply. So I just like how all encompassing it is, really. Um, also, before we get into like any sort of um, like real story time or whatever, the last video that I posted, I did tell you guys we were waiting for the results of Eric's test, which did come back negative. Thank you, Jesus. Um, such a huge stress reliever. And so we were about three days away from the two weeks being over. Um, so I did get to see Peanut a little early, um, which made me very, very happy. Uh, made Eric happy. We both super missed him. Um, while he was gone. So um, yeah, so super glad that that is done and over with and we are out of the woods, uh, at least for now, um, until, you know, hopefully there won't be a next time. But um, yeah, so that's where we're at on that. As far as these um, cards go, I just kind of picked the color based on, um, I guess, things that are more traditional, like blue for police, red for fire, um, the uh, na what? Olive green? Navy. Navy? Why, Kelly? Why? Um, the olive green for the military. And then for the other two cards, um, the purple and the teal, uh, I just kind of picked them to round out the entirety of the <laughs> color collection. Um, so here I am going to, just to make the backgrounds a little bit more interesting, and once again, you could totally skip this step to make these um, a little bit easier to do. Uh, I'm going to splatter the background with some Perfect Pearls and the color Perfect Pearls, just because I really like the way that that breaks up my background, and it's a super easy way to add some extra shine, and I'm always so all about the shine. The only thing I will comment about that is if you are going to be sending like a thank you card or miss you card or you're my hero card to somebody in the military who is active duty um, that's overseas um, or stationed somewhere, please leave off the shine, please leave off the glitter. Um, those, because even though we don't intend them to, can come off of the cards and uh, put our military members at risk. So please do not put those on those cards um, if you were going to be sending those. Um, so here I'm just laying out my placement. For the most part, I made the sentiments the same and I just swapped out um, 
the bottom portion of it but for the teachers one um the teachers one is like a whole separate sentiment so i'm just going to pick up all of these here and i did use the stamp even though i'm gonna um, stamp them separately color them and then die cut them out i use them for placement for my um sentiment so that i knew where everything was going to hit and i was going to have enough room for everything um and I'm just going to stamp these down in uh, Hero Arts black ink because I'm not going to be Copa coloring them. So I can use the super dark bright bold ink. <laughs> um, not that the other, the other ones are playing catch up though, honestly. Like the Hero Arts um, intense black ink, I like the uh, Gina K Amalgam ink. Like they really are getting much, much darker when Copa coloring first started really being a thing. The only thing that was available was Memento Tuxedo Black. And um, it was a good ink and I used it for years, but it was not really dark black. Um, there, other than the fact that I like a bold black, we all know I like a bold black outline, lordy mercy, I do. Um, other than that, there was nothing wrong with that ink. So here I'm just kind of cleaning them up um, so that each time I can move out the uh, image and make sure that everything is going to line up accordingly. Um, I, this is so much easier with the Misty. Uh, if you don't have a um, Misty, then I would just use a stamp positioner um, or put them on a block and stamp them old school. Blacks always work. Um, so here I have just a clean white piece of paper. I'm just gonna stamp the image on um, for all of them. And then here I've left that not all heroes wear capes at the top and then just swapped out the bottom for some wear dog tags. Um, it'll be some wear a badge, um, some wear scrubs, like you get the point. Um, but yeah, just going to go through and stamp all those. I'm showing you pretty, pretty much all of the steps because these were so simple and did come together so quickly that if I didn't show you all of these steps, um, we would not have we would have like a five minute video, which some people like, but not those people that come to my channel because y'all know that I make like 20, 30 minute videos. <laughs> so we can include story time. Speaking of story time, um, I don't really have anything um, special or spectacular that's been going on. Um, we finally, uh, I had been working on those end tables and Peanut had asked me to please not paint them while he was uh, away at his dad's house so we did get those finally finished the other day they came out super pretty i'm happy with them even though i wasn't able to stain the tops and i did have to paint them um just because that veneer had broken off due to the water damage um but i did eric poor eric um he just <laughs> he just gets signed up for these things don't mind my top knot there right just big curly top knot um he gets signed up for these things because I see these pieces on Facebook Marketplace and I see these things that I could turn them into and it's so much cheaper. Like I really, really wanted a um, entertainment center and like our house is done in the um, like farmhouse, chic, shabby farmhouse. It was the way the house was when we got it. Um, and so people are like, oh, farmhouse is on its way out. Listen, I just got this house. So this farmhouse is in for quite some time. It's just going to be here for a while. Uh, I did, you'll see at the top, I did eventually, um, when I was trying to stamp them each individually as I went, I was running out of room. So I just decided I was not going to do that. I was just going to stamp them all at one time. So I'm going to stamp this with the sentiment with the paramedic cross. I'm just going to move that up and then stamp them all at one time so that I can color them. Plus, it cuts down on me having to move out um, several pieces of paper while I'm doing the coloring. You can, I can just kind of turn the page um, and you can see them all <laughs> at one time. Um, so I'm just going to line that top piece back up and then move, like I said, move that little cross up and stamp them all down. This is um, still in the intense black ink because um, COVID coloring, right. So uh, Eric totally gets rooked into doing these things. I had wanted a more, I guess farmhouse style entertainment center they had a super pretty one when we first came and viewed the house that was kind of like a bright teal color um i didn't love the bright teal necessarily um but i thought that the the way that it looked it looked like an old school buffet like the bottom portion of a china cabinet and i really liked it but looking at them to purchase one they're like 500 dollars, y'all 
Like, and that's probably like middle of the road. That's not even the most expensive ones you can get. And I do not have $500 to buy a buffet. So there was a lady on Facebook Marketplace, totally digging this Facebook Marketplace. I think Eric probably wish I was not digging it so much, but um, she was selling a china cabinet with the hutch and the bada buffet for $50. Real wood, solid wood, 50 bucks, y'all, $50. And like, I get that people just want to get rid of their things because it's taking up space in their house and they no longer need it. I totally understand that. So I asked him, hey, can we, can I do this? And he was like, I think you're out of your mind, but yeah, we can do this if this is what you want to do because he loves me and he's super supportive and he's awesome. So we sign up to go get the, um, the China cabinet. Thankfully it was in the city that we also live in. So we did not have to travel very far to get it. And this, um, family had like three or four boys there to kind of help us out and load it up. Um, So we get there, load it all up. Now the china cabinet has like the top portion of it, the hutch portion has like wrought iron uh, glass doors on it. But I'm not, I'm not using either one of these pieces as a china cabinet. Like I'm just not. Um, So I was trying to figure out something I could do with the hutch. It's pretty solid. It's got really good shelving. And so I think that we're going to turn that into extra shelving in my craft room though uh, Eric is a little worried about hanging it on the wall because it is so heavy. It is solid wood. Um, So he is working on trying to finagle a way to hang it up for me, um, which I super appreciate. And then the bottom portion of it, I am going to turn into um, our entertainment center for our family room. So the way that the piece originally came is it has three drawers in the middle and then two doors on the outside. So I'm leaving the doors on, I'm going to take out two of the drawers and then Eric's gonna cut me shelves to put in there um, so that we can put like the Apple TV and um, you know, any video game consoles or things that we have there uh, and it can still get a signal since it won't have any glass. And then um, I'm going to keep the bottom drawer for um, remote controls and, you know, things like that. Um, So I'm super excited about it. I started working on it two days ago um, because it is taking up quite a bit of space in our (laughs) garage. Um, One side of our garage is pretty much just furniture at the moment. So um, he pulled off the doors for me um, and then Nathan also helped pull off the doors which is you know super helpful I'm glad for when he wants to be involved he does not always want to be involved a lot of times he'll tell me this is boring and then he wants to you know go ride his bike or uh, watch his tablet or what have you Um, so sometimes I get the help with the little one sometimes the little one don't want to help I'm sure all of you with little ones can totally relate that they're uh their attention span is very, very limited. So took the doors off, um, sanded those holes, uh, cause I am going to cover them up. I'm not going to put the doors back on just cause you know how it is with like craft items. Everything is so many different shapes and like, I don't want to have to worry about not being able to put certain things on the shelves because then the doors won't close and now I gotta leave the doors open or it looks weird or awkward. I don't, don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take them off. Um, and then all of the furniture in my craft room is black, uh, even though I don't really love black. I don't, I don't really love it. I would like it to be white, but that's not the situation I have because when I graduated college, I think it was when I graduated college, my parents bought me an L-shaped desk and it is metal with a glass top and the glass top is tempered glass and so it's got like a black border on the outside. Um, and I, it's still the desk I use now, however many years later that is, um, is a great desk. Love my desk. Love the L desk because I keep my computer on one side and then I craft on the other side and I put all of everything else in the corner and it just stacks up till it's a t- absolute mess and it's falling over. And I'm really working my way up that mountaintop right now. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> um, I'm sure I cannot be the only person who crafts like that. I mean, come on, meet me where I am, people. Um, and so anyway, when I bought the furniture to go in my craft room from Ikea. Uh, I have like a set of rolling drawers and then I have a dresser. Um, I bought black because it made the most sense because my desk was black. So this also will be painted black. I originally had the idea that in order to add some color, um, I would use contact paper. 
Um, they have so many out there and like Etsy has a huge ton of different ones that you can um, pick and choose from and they're such pretty prints and um, you know it's I think that like the wallpaper contact paper look is starting to come back in for certain things even though for years now it's been paint um, which I still prefer paint because wallpaper is a nightmare my mama used to put wallpaper on everything and then when she changed her mind and we all had to take the wallpaper down we'd be standing on chairs like in the hallway with spray bottles of warm water and whatever else she put in there and spatulas just scraping wallpaper off for days y'all like I did that in my childhood yes I did um but so I was gonna pop the back of it off and just paint um, or just put contact paper on that and then put the back back on um, I'm not sure if the back will survive that we do have another piece of like that particle board that they put on the back of furniture um, if it goes bad and it breaks <laughs> um, so we do have a piece of that but I looked at the Etsy contact paper and uh, fell in love with a whole bunch of prints but it is like once you start getting into how much I'm gonna need because this hutch is so large it is expensive it's like you know $80 a roll and I'm gonna need multiple rolls and I'm just like oof I can see like cha-ching 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 it's chinging in and I don't I don't like it I'm cheap chicken um so I think I'm just gonna end up painting it we will see how that goes um once we can get it off I am because I'm on 12-hour shifts now like I have like two or three days where I work in a row and then I have you know two or three days off just depends on what rotation in the schedule I'm in and right now I'm uh, coming up on a three-day weekend which I am super excited about so I'm hoping to make um, some real progress with both of those projects soon um, and um, so the that's pretty much the hutch right now and then the buffet um, I don't want to get into I love the look of real wood I really do and they're like solid wood pieces that have such a value um, such a craftsmanship and there's a part of me that's a little bit sad to cover it up with paint even though I know like the chalk chalk paint fad is for real right now everybody's painting everything with chalk paint um, and I get it because it's no prep and it sticks to anything and I totally understand how the ease of that would be super appealing um, but you lose something with painting over it. However, I do want my entertainment center buffet uh, to be a color because our family room currently we have like beige carpet and then I think it's like called sea salt um, walls. It's like a really pale um, Tiffany blue or really pale teal turquoise color and um, so I would like there to be a little bit of contrast. So I was originally going to like paint it a super dark brown because we have a dark brown accent wall and I thought okay well that'll look nice. Turns out brown chalk paint isn't really a thing. Like apparently people don't want to paint anything brown. So there was like a recipe for how you can mix Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, I wasn't really interested in having to mix my own color. Um, and then I found this. I told you I didn't like the bright teal that they originally had but I did find like a more subdued it's called Highland Blue by Rustoleum um, that I do like and I think that it'll be enough of a contrast for it to look pretty and then I am gonna stain the top of it um, like this dark Java color so totally excited to see how that goes if you're interested in seeing any of those like I'm always sharing pictures on my Instagram which is um, the abbreviation for dispatcher D is in David I S P is in Paul 6194 if you have an Instagram and don't follow me and are interested um, I'm always sharing pictures over there of just really everything um, Eric makes fun of me tells me I do it for the gram I just like sharing with people and having interaction my bad um, so yeah that's that um, the one section of it like you can tell I when we picked it up it was in their garage so I'm thinking it was probably in their garage for quite some time um, that it was just sitting out there because you can tell on the hutch part of it like somebody was setting a coffee mug of something on this um, and it seriously affected the varnish on it it was kind of bubbled up on both the buffet and the hutch part of it um, so I stripped the top of the buffet yesterday and it did take off most of the um, like discoloration so I'm really hopeful that the stain will still 
work um you know once we get everything sanded right now it's just stripped and it looks like trash but it always does at that stage <laughs> in the game um and then um the hutch portion since i am gonna paint it i'm just gonna um sand off any of that finish um so it isn't raised or chipping off or anything uh, yeah i'm very excited about that we are now we're having the same um problem well not really problem we're facing the same problem that every other parent in the free world is facing right now which is to send them back to school or not to send them back to school and my situation um is unique because obviously there's Eric and I but then you know Nathan's dad's also in the picture and so trying to get everybody on the same page about what we think um is really very challenging and then my heart goes out to people who don't have the option so like my best friend my goddaughter she's the same age as Nathan she hasn't been working this whole time um and because she doesn't have childcare, and she's like I need her to as much as I don't want to send her back to school I need her to go back to school because I need to go back to work and like I've seen all of these memes and stuff on Facebook about how like teachers shouldn't have to take the risk because um you don't want to take care of your own children I'm with you for the tea like I love teachers they have my immense support and I cannot even imagine having to be a teacher today and what they are facing but to call out parents for like using school as a babysitter um so that teacher or so that they can go to work um we all do newsflash we all do because you you know that your kid from nine to three or eight to four or whatever it is that they're going to school um is taken care of for that period of time and so that what enables all of us to be able to go to work um and so I, I genuinely feel for her because she cannot work right now because she has nobody to take care of my goddaughter. Um, so we talked a little bit about maybe what some options might be if we could um, swing it so that Alexa comes here. Um, you know, they aren't being exposed to any other children. Could we low-key expose them to each other and be okay? Um, just trying to figure out some ways to help um each other out and you know I would encourage you if you have people in your community in your life that you can find a way to help them out um that would be amazing um and I would encourage you to do that because we are you know it's cliche we're all in this together but we really are um you know the saying it takes a village to raise a child has been around for years and I couldn't do it without help from other people as well and before that was my mom and dad you know they would take care of peanut for me while I worked or while I slept because I worked night shift um and now Eric um stepped up I mean so huge and as Nathan's basically his primary caregiver um because I work nights so I'm sleeping during the day and his dad uh works um and so Eric is Eric's the parent um and he's awesome and I cannot even express how much I appreciate that um because I know that there's a lot of people who would not who wouldn't want to do it who wouldn't volunteer to do it and I just appreciate that he is so willing um and that he loves Nathan so much that he wants to take care of him um yeah so um that's kind of where we're at on that still kind of waiting for our school district to make a decision but please know if you are between this rock and a hard place we are right there with you and um like just praying that we're all able to find a solution um, that is safe and works for everybody. Um, so now we're getting to the part where we're just putting the cards together. Um, basically, I'm just popping up the little emblems right over where I, I stamped them with foam tape. And then I am adding like the three little, what is that? It's an ellipses, the three little dots um, to continue the sentiment. These are... Um, the enamel dots, honeybees enamel dots, and I'm just kind of color coordinating them. Um, the first part of the sentiment is a little further away from the bottom part of the sentiment, and so I felt like there needed to be something to kind of guide the eye and fill that in. They were looking a little too plain. You could absolutely use like the Nouveau drops for this, or sequins, or um, you know, just whatever kind of accessory is your go-to here I dropped it and then it's st <laughs> it stuck where I didn't want it to stick and my nails are a little longer so I was having a hard time 
picking them up. Um, I do have a little gem dropper thing, but because these are adhesive, they were not picking them up great. Um, so this is all of them done and complete and, you know, ready to go for any um, heroes in my life that I need to, to send them out to. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once I put the, well, once I put the glitter on, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I genuinely appreciate that you, you know, take time out of your day to come visit and interact with me. I'm very grateful for that. Um, yeah, and that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.